Hi, I'm Chris Peters, and this is episode two in our screencast series about building a social networking site using the Cold Fusion on Wheels framework. In this episode, we'll be covering form helpers. Form helpers help you generate forms that are bound directly to your database tables and help you save a lot of time. Now that we have our register action all set up, let's go ahead and create the form for it. I'll remove the CF dump here. And what we're going to do is create what's called a view for our register action. And a view is the presentation layer for our action. And we'll create a folder in here that holds all of the, the views for the user controller. By convention, we should name it user then. And we'll create a CFM page for each of our actions. So we'll create a register.cfm. Because this view is expecting a variable called user that's passed by the, the, the controller, we'll set a CF param for user. I, I think that that helps keep our, our view um, more self-documenting since it's expecting a value. And anything that's set here in this method becomes available in the view. So that's pretty handy. As you can see, the, the controller basically sets the values and, and the data that the view needs. And the view can be completely oblivious to how that data was obtained. So we'll use what are called form helpers that create our form elements. And the first one that we'll call is start form tag. And we'll pass it an action that we want to, to post this form to. Um, this can be anything that we want. What makes sense to me is create. So let's do that. And we'll also do end form tag. And let's run that. And when you view source, you'll see that it set the, the form tag for us with method post and the action of user create. So everything's looking good so far. Let's create a couple fields. The first helper that we'll call for that is text field. It takes a label, so we'll pass it a label of first name. Now, it also takes an argument called object name, and we pass it the name of the variable that has our object that we want to bind our form to. So object name equals user, and it also takes property, which represents the property that this field collects data for. And let's do the last name, too. Let's go ahead and run this again. Wheels generated our form fields and the labels are bound to the, the inputs. And if we look under the hood real quick, it created our label and our name is basically the, the variable name with the property and same thing for ID. Now let's do the rest of our form fields basically for what the database is requiring. We'll do one for email. For gender, it's let's do a radio buttons. So we'll do a field set to keep it nice and accessible. For the radio button, we'll call the radio button helper. And it also takes a label an object name and a property. It also takes an argument called tag value and our database is expecting a character so we'll do M for male and F for female. We also take a value called URL ID, which basically stores how the user prefers for their URL to look for their profile. Profile address. We'll also do a text field for this. And for the label, we'll do a preview of what their URL is going to look like.
Lastly, we'll do a submit button. For that, we'll use the submit tag helper and we'll pass it a value of register now. Let's also add a heading. So if we run our action again, you'll see that the whole form is there. Now let's uh, create the code that that uh, handles this data. As you remember, we set our form to post for to the create action. So we'll create a method in here called create. And just so you can understand what's going on, let's cf dump a struct called params. And let's go ahead and fill out this form for me. And when I register, uh, you'll see that the params struct holds some several different values. First, it, it always holds values for controller and action, and that can be pretty handy within our application if we need to know those values. Also, the user value contains a struct that has keys for all of the fields that we filled out in the form. This can be handy because uh, now our action doesn't need to know if the data was submitted through the, the form scope or the URL scope, it wheels will always copy that over to params no matter what, which is a um, basic feature that most cold fusion frameworks provide. So now let's set a variable called user again, and it's also going to hold a person object, and it's also going to call new, but this time let's pass it params.user and let's abort that to see what's going on. So we'll post this again. As you can see we have our person model object again except this time it injected the values from the params.user struct as properties within the object and this is really handy because now we don't have to set those uh, properties individually. So now let's call user.save and the, the save method on a model object will basically run the SQL needed to save that to the database. So since we're creating a new record it'll do an insert statement and if we were updating it it would auto automatically know to call a SQL update. And just so you can see, so we have an empty database and we'll submit this form again. We got a view not found error which is okay for now, but the point is if we look in our database now you'll see that it inserted the data that I just put into the form. So no writing an insert statement with all of the CF query param tags and all of that stuff. Uh, Wheels took care of all of that for us automatically and it submitted null values for stuff that we didn't include in our form or didn't include values for. You'll notice that I also have some extra fields in my database called created at, updated at, and deleted at. By default Wheels will use these uh, on these different events for our object. So uh, since we created this record, Wheels automatically saved a timestamp of when it was saved to the database, which is another handy shortcut uh, for another task that we tend to use a lot within uh, database tables. And that wraps up our demonstration on form helpers. Visit us at cfwheels.org to see more screencasts as we record them. We've got a lot more to go on our social networking site.